I have a question for you. What does this airplane, the Oregon Trail computer game, and the popular video game Animal Crossing all have in common? While it might not be equally obvious for each of them, they are all models for larger, more complex systems. Sure, you might say, I can see how a model plane is, well, a small model of a life-sized plane. But what about Animal Crossing? And how does this apply to games? That's what I'm going to talk with you about today. My name is Travis Willingham Windelharth, and I'm here to discuss games as models and how they support learning. In my last video, I compared gamification and game-based learning. I explained that good game-based learning uses games that model real-world systems. To understand and engage in effective game-based learning, we need to grasp how these models work. Let's start with something familiar, a model plane, perhaps like this one right here. This model is a scaled-down, simplified version of a real Concorde jet. The model plane has scaled down simplified parts of an actual Concorde jet, like the engine, wings, cockpit, and passenger area. You can even manipulate the control surfaces to see how they would move. Models like this are useful because we often don't have access to the real thing, and they allow us to explore and understand things like planes or even social systems in a tangible way. With this idea of how a model works in mind, let's shift gears and explore a few different models. A fish tank, a history-themed video game, and a social simulation game that can be helpful learning tools and build a deeper understanding of how games act like models. First, let's talk about another example of a physical model, a fish tank. A fish tank is a smaller scale model of a larger and more complicated aquatic ecosystem like an ocean. A fish tank has key characteristics like pH and oxygen levels that need to be measured and understood in order to maintain a healthy environment for fish and other organisms. All of the organisms in a tank, the fish, the plants, and even the bacteria, make up a dynamic aquatic system that can be explored and understood on a desktop. The learning scholar James G actually makes a direct comparison between model-based learning achieved with a fish tank and the learning that occurs in games. He says, in the real world, a fish tank can be a little simplified ecosystem that clearly displays some critical variables and their interactions that are otherwise obscured in the highly complex ecosystem in the real world. In this way, fish tanks are good for learning because they give people a meaningful system to interact with that resembles the larger system that isn't overwhelming. Well, guess what? games work the same way. They're simplified models of complex systems that we can interact with. That brings us to our second new model, the Oregon Trail video game. This historical simulation allows players to manage resources and make strategic decisions in order to survive a virtual journey across 19th century America. At the start, your background sets your starting wealth and skill set, and you have to decide what food and supplies to bring with you to combat challenges like disease and navigation without modern tools. By playing through this realistic model, players understand the choices and consequences pioneers faced firsthand. It really brings the Oregon Trail experience to life. So what about the social simulation game Animal Crossing? This cozy community building game is much more than just cute. It's a model of a small rural community. It simplifies the real world, letting players experience commerce, debt, community infrastructure, and the ups and downs of building a home and life for yourself 
in an engaging way that is easier to understand. In fact, the game's scholar Ian Bogost uses Animal Crossing as a key example of what he calls procedural rhetoric. Procedural rhetoric refers to how the models in a game can actually act as rhetoric, meaning the game model is actually making claims and arguments about the world that can be explored. In this way, games can make points about society and encourage players to reflect on the world around them. It all depends on what skills or environments a game focuses on modeling. So now you hopefully have a better understanding of how games can model complex systems that exist in the real world. This concept is key to understanding the educationally relevant aspects and benefits of game-based learning, which we'll explore in future videos, along with the individual pieces of games that are assembled to make up these models, and a process called formal analysis for games. Stay tuned.